Maybe it's just, you know, one of those days. Hey guys. So as most of you are already aware, I just did another big shopping trip where we went to both Barnes and Nobles and we went to Target. And out of all of the puzzles that I picked up during both trips, I figured, you know what? I think the best ones to, you know, get started working on would, would be the cheap ones. Because why not, right? I mean, I figured I got so many tons of fancy puzzles stacking up in my collections and I still have a lot of the, you know, cheap, less expensive ones. And I, I probably should start getting through them. But anyways, the two cheap, well, I'm not going to say cheap. I don't know if they're really cheap. Yeah, I mean, cheap in price. The two less expensive puzzles that I picked up were from Target. And the ones that I'm talking about is one from the brand Horizon. This one is called Wild Wilderness Puzzle. At least I think it is. The puzzle image itself says get outside and explore. But anyways, this one is 150 pieces. And I have no clue how big it's going to be. And if you didn't see the Target shopping trip, I'm gonna leave a link to it down below so that you can check it out. But you know, the reason why I picked this one up was because this was only $3. So that's the 150 piece puzzle. And you know, as I said in that video, this image is fantastic. It just makes me wanna like drop everything, quit my job and go on vacation permanently. But unfortunately I can't do that. So instead I'll just escape through my puzzles. That's that one. And then the other one that I picked up, which surprisingly was also $3, is this 500 piece puzzle. And I think the image is called Plant Babies. And this one is 24 by 18 inches when it's completed. And the brand is Hinkler. And I'm guessing the collection name is Illustrated Jigsaw. This image is great. It's very simple. It's very, you know, green because there's lots of plants and stuff like that. And it really does give me kind of like that spring vibe in terms of, you know, like plant shopping and things like that. I'm not very good with plants, so I don't really know if I can say this is me in the image here. It could be, you know, I'm wearing glasses. But anyways, aside from that, I am super curious to see what the overall quality is like from these two puzzles. Now, I do know at Dollar Tree, when I've been there a number of times, they do have in their, their premium aisles, they have puzzles that are $3 as well. And I wanna know if these are any better or if they're gonna be worse than the ones at Dollar Tree at the same price. But if they are just as good, you know, I'd be curious to go head to Target every now and then, you know, when the seasons and whatnot changes and see if they have different images throughout the year. Because it's, you know, really, at $3 a, a puzzle, that's really not bad. But you know what, guys? I'm never gonna find out if I keep yapping and I don't open these darn boxes up and start checking them out. So you know what? I think we're gonna start with the 150 piece puzzle first. And then after that, we'll move on to the 500 count set. and. Let's see what, you know, what we're getting ourselves into. All right, let's move on. All right, so let's open this up. Please excuse this beam of light coming from my window, but I'm working during the daytime, which to me is the best time to puzzle. But anyways, oh, I didn't do a good job so far opening this up, but you know, that's okay. We'll just put some glue on that. All right, let's open up the 150 piece count set here. Oh, all right, so we have the pieces loose inside the tube and let's see what these are like and so far I'm gonna be honest. I can already tell that this is quite junk But then again, we only spent three dollars, so you can't expect much, right? So we have pretty large pieces here, which is really good and again not quite surprising for a small count set The print is really sharp. We got some clear outlines here the color looks really vibrant. I'm kind of hoping this camera is focusing well on this because um, I'm not really sure how to use this camera. It's still it's new, so I'm still learning. But we do have quite a bit of glare here, as you can see. You can't really see it on these pieces too much, but for the dark ones, you can see on that side there how, how much glare we have. I mean, 
you can kind of see how that bends these are they're fairly thin so yeah just be aware of that but then again you know you can't be too surprised because this is a three dollar set but let's see what the 500 count looks like all right so this one has a piece of tape on one side so let's carefully open that okay, we have a little bit of puzzle dust in the bag here but it doesn't seem like it's too extreme as you can see there anyways let's open this up all right i'm not taking all these pieces up because i do want to work on the other puzzle as well but let's see what these are like real quick these actually feel stronger, much stronger than the 150 piece puzzle. I mean, I just grabbed this out of the tube and it already bent. This is the 150 piece. These are very, very weak. These kind of have like a white back to them, which I don't know. I think it's giving it a little bit more strength, but I mean, not bad actually. The print doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty true to the image here in terms of colors and outlines and whatnot. Doesn't look too bad. We do have quite a bit of glare here, as you can see, but I mean, I mean, we'll really, the real test with that is when we're actually puzzling, right? So yeah, we're gonna have to see how these pieces fit. Do, do these actually hold? I'd be curious, that's always what I'm most curious about with puzzles. Do they actually hold well? But anyways, to be honest, there's really not much more to say about these cheap puzzles. So you know what? Let's start with the 150 piece count puzzle see what this is like and then we're going to move on to the 500 count set and and do a comparison between the two and see which one is the better value for your three dollars all right guys let's move on yep even though this was only 150 pieces, I of course had the urge to do a quick sort. So I quickly separated this into small piles. We got edges, letters, yellow orange, yellow greens, plain greens, water with yellows, and then just water. I know it may seem silly for such a small puzzle count, but it's just habit now, and I'm finding it a difficult one to break. But anyways, one habit I did break was starting with the edges. Instead, I decided to start with the letters, then I moved to piecing some of the edges, but then decided I wanted to get on with the fun stuff and piece together the scenery. Overall, between the small piece count and the simple image, this was not a very challenging puzzle. But what did throw me off a bit was the fact that aside from the edge pieces, this puzzle only has two shapes. And they look pretty darn close too. And I dealt with a lot of false fits, which I'm not gonna lie, it got me a little annoyed at times because I just kept thinking to myself like, why is this getting me? I should have been done with this by now. This puzzle took me about 35 minutes to complete. Even after it was completed, I noticed there were some pieces in the wrong place. Ugh, I was surprised that this simple puzzle threw curveballs at me. But I guess it did have to make up for the fact that it was only 150 pieces and it needed to give me some kind of puzzle time, especially with the piece quality not being quite there. The fit was a bit strange, it felt a bit tight in areas, but because of that it did have a surprisingly good hold. It even held up to the pickup test and my storage test, which is totally unnecessary for something like this in my opinion, but still kind of cool to see for something so cheap. Because as I mentioned earlier, they're, they're pretty thin and they can bend very easily, so don't be a beast. Heck, I think if you look at them the wrong way they'll bend, but that's okay, it's only $3. Anyways, as soon as I packed that cheapness away, I moved on to the next one. And I was really looking forward to this because I just couldn't wait to see what was in store for me. To have another $3 option, a 500 count at that, too exciting for someone who likes to save a few pennies whenever they can. As I said earlier, I've only ever seen something like this at Dollar Tree, so let's stop being too excited and let's get on with the, my puzzle process. And yes, I sorted it. All right, so I did this sort pretty quickly. I kind of feel like I over sorted, if that makes any sense. But anyways, here's what I did. We have the edge pieces, of course. 
These pieces here are ones that have this light browny tone to them. It has some other details in it, but mainly that's the, the color that I put here. These are just the plain white pieces. These are white pieces with leaves and other kinds of greenery stuff. I mean, it's gonna be leaves, the whole image is plants. Anyways, this one is kind of the same thing going on here, but there's more white in these and I threw in some of these plain tan pieces as well, which now that I think about it, should have probably gone in that one, but anyways. This one here, we have like a darker brown background with leaves. This tray here, it's kind of like two piles going on here. This side is like piece, pieces with just full of green. And then this side has like a bunch of random pieces with pots and lettering, lettering from like basically the prices on the little, on the plants. And then for the last tray is anything that has to do with the lady. So we have her dress, her hair, her face and all that stuff. So yeah, pretty straightforward. I kind of feel like I could have had less trays here, but that's okay. In the end, all this really does for me it is, is help me get an idea of what I'm working with in terms of, you know, the kind of details that are in these pieces and helps me, helps me get familiar with the image itself. So let's continue. So unlike the last puzzle, I did start with the edges for this one. Then I figured, well, you know what? This shopping lady looks like she'll be pretty easy. Let's get her done quickly. But I guess I was just having one of those days. You know, it's funny. Sometimes you come across an image that really makes you, you know, kind of question your puzzling skills. And this, for some reason, is definitely one of those images. And it's funny to me because I, it's a simple image. And sometimes, I don't know, am I overthinking it? Am, am I making it more challenging for myself? I don't know. But for some reason, I seem to be, I'm stuck with her dress and I don't know why. Maybe it's just, you know, one of those days, you know, I'm sure some of you have them where, you know, one day you're doing amazingly well with your puzzling and you're flying through it. And then some days you're just stumped or I don't know, maybe I need to go get a brownie or something. I don't know, but here's what I've got done so far with this. So yeah, I kind of feel like with the amount of time I've been working on this puzzle, I, I feel like I should be a lot further along. But, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to make this like a rush rush kind of thing anyway, so I don't even know why I'm talking about this. But I thought I should mention it because I'm just, I guess I'm just having one of those days. And that's okay because not every puzzling day is perfect. So I think what I'm probably going to do at this point, which is what I usually do when I get stuck on an area, is simply move on to something else move on to a different section of the puzzle and you know have some progress there so i don't know maybe i'll start doing some of the planters or something like that or the signs i'm not gonna even bother with the leaves yet because that looks like that's definitely gonna take me a long time but anyways i did grab the rest of the brownie that my husband bought me yesterday so i'm gonna eat that whilst i continue on with this and hopefully that that gives me gets my puzzle juices flowing all right, let's continue on with this. And just as I expected, that brownie sure did help. Sometimes getting a little bit of reinforcements in you make all the difference. I was able to get some planters in place, got a little bit of resorting done, and I finished her dress. It was great. What do you guys like to grab for yourself when you need a little pick-me-up? I realize I tend to show a lot of junk food in my videos. I mean, I know I must give the impression that I have a terrible diet, but I don't, I promise. But anyways, enough about snacks, even though I know I can talk about food for hours, but focus Mandy, the puzzle. Okay, let's do this. So, quality. Compared to the 150 piece count, these pieces did feel a little stronger, but, but don't get too excited, it wasn't that much stronger. The backing had this white layer or finish to it, which now that I think of it, it probably gave the impression of a stronger piece because it really was about the same thickness, but still, it did feel better than the other puzzle. In terms of fit, I mean, this was cut very well, so the pieces fell very nicely together, but it created a crumbly situation in some instances, not, not the entire time. It had a little hold to it. I mean, not enough to withstand the pickup test, but I was able to hold up a few pieces at a time. 
sometimes. But I think that had more to do with the P-shapes that were involved in that particular area. And speaking of P-shapes, this puzzle had a pretty darn good variety of them. I like that. It made it very easy when it came to resorting by shape which I decided to start doing as I got closer to the end of the puzzle. All right, we're getting close to the end now. And of course, I have a mess everywhere like always, but that's okay. And now that I'm closer to the end, I'm getting stuck with like the, the more difficult pieces, at least to me. These, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what goes where because, you know, the whole thing is plants, leaves, kind of the same stuff. So I'm, I think I'm going to probably do a quick resort and kind of put things together on the side here and get them in place and finish up. All right, let's finish this. I don't know about you, but I tend to leave the more challenging areas of a puzzle or image to the end. For this image, it was all the leaves and the solid white background. To push through the white background, I ended up resorting by shape, which is a tip you can use if you're close to the finish and you're struggling to get those last pieces in. And once you have all your pieces lined up the same, you can spin your trays around, carefully of course, to match all the pieces up to the missing spot. It kind of just helps you to see things a little better, if, if that makes any sense. Ugh, I hate when I can't figure out how to clearly describe things, but I guess that's just me. But what can I do? Anyways, this puzzle took me about three and a half hours to complete. In the end, these two puzzle experiences weren't as bad as I thought they'd be. I mean, you can't expect much for $3, but was one better than the other? Alright, so overall, that really wasn't too bad. So, let's quickly talk about the similarities with these two. One thing that I noticed right away was the print quality. Honestly, it really was pretty good. The colors were very sharp, the image was clear, it wasn't blurry or anything like that. It was pretty good stuff. And another thing that I really liked was the piece size. The 150 piece puzzle pieces were slightly bigger than the 500, but still both overall really good size. Which is great for those who have issues handling smaller pieces or have a hard time seeing the print on the smaller pieces. And of course, most importantly, they were both fun. And of course, another humongous plus for me, and I'm sure what would be for a lot of you, is of course the price. It's great if you want to buy this for kids. And also, these would make great puzzles to take with you when you're traveling. I mean, if you lose any pieces, it don't matter. It was only three bucks in the end. But of course, when there's positives, there's negatives. So let's quickly go over what I didn't quite like about each of these. Now, one thing that I quickly noted with both of these puzzles is the false fit situation. That can get a little frustrating at times, even though these puzzles were overall pretty easy to piece together, you know, the, the, the false fits would get you. The other thing that I noticed with both was the glare, which again, wasn't too surprising to me. Cheaper puzzles tend to have a glare situation going on, so, so be aware of that. And of course, I have to get into my my pet peeve, I guess that's what you call it, I don't know. The fit and the hold. Now, as for the 150 count, I kind of felt like the overall fit was quite tight, but it did give it a pretty darn good hold. But the 500 count puzzle, it, it felt more on the loosey-goosey side. Kind of had that crumbly effect to it, which quite honestly is not my thing and I'm sure is not a thing for most of you. I know I always make a big deal about hold and some of you might think it's a little crazy of me, but I, it, it's one of the things that drive me nuts in a good way with puzzles. I love when I can hold my sections all over the place, you know, kind of piece it like that and work on sections on different areas. What, I'm rambling now, let's move on. But anyways, again, none of these issues were surprises to me because i mean come on they're, they're i'll say it for the millionth time they, they were three dollars what what can you expect really but if i had to choose between the two i would definitely go for the 500 count puzzle not only because you know with 500 pieces you obviously get more puzzle time but the pieces do feel a bit sturdier than the 150 counts I mean, with that one, you could just look at it the wrong way and it bent. And you also get a much better variety of piece shapes, which of course makes the overall puzzling experience way more interesting and fun, at least to me. So I can ignore the fact that this was crumbly because, you know, hello, it was $3. 
I mean, overall, the quality was way better than the 150 piece, which was surprising to me because with them being both being the same price, I, I expected a downgrade with the higher piece count because usually that's, that's what happens with puzzles, at least in my experience. I almost feel like with this puzzle, this, the, the 150 piece, they, they, you're paying more for the packaging than anything, and then they, they, skimped, uh, they skimped on the puzzle piece quality. With the 500 count, you get a better quality piece, and you know, the, the packaging isn't very interesting at all. It's just, you know, a cardboard, you know, basic box here. Now the best puzzle that I can compare this to, and I'm talking about price as well, the best one I can compare it to is the puzzle that I bought from Dollar Tree in their, you know, so-called premium section. And quite honestly, I feel like you're kind of getting the same experience with both puzzles. But Dollar Tree's Rose Art puzzle is actually a little thicker than Target's. In terms of fit and hold, you're, you're getting the same crumbly effect going on. But you know what? At $3, again, you can't go wrong. But now this got me thinking. Now I feel like I want to make a video comparing all of my budget puzzles and ranking them. So let me know down below if that'll be a video that you'd be interested in. But if any of you guys have tried any of Target's budget puzzles, please let me know down below what were your experiences like? And you know, let me know if it was the same as my own experience or did it suck even more? If any of you are interested in joining my puzzling community where you can chat about your own puzzling experiences with other puzzlers and myself i'm gonna leave a link to my discord video down below so that you could look more into it and if you'd like to see me review other puzzle brands and other types of puzzles be sure to subscribe but anyways guys i need to get a move on with a bunch of things that i've not bothered working on so i hope you're all doing well Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.